Automotive manufacturers wanting to be really profitable tend to focus these days on two things, premium brands and compact SUVs. Here's a car that can satisfy on both counts, the fashionable DS3 Crossback. It won't be long before SUVs account for a quarter of all car sales, and premium brands account for 11% of all worldwide car production, but 37% of automotive segment profits, which explains why the Peugeot Citroën conglomerate needs the DS brand, and why the DS brand needs the DS3 Crossback. It's taken the DS mark some time to get off the ground. The DS3, DS4 and DS5 hatches the company kicked off with were rebadged Citroëns that struggled to justify premium pricing. But we were promised bespoke DS designs that would, the initial ones designed for the growing SUV market. The mid-sized seven-seat DS7 Crossback, launched in early 2018, was the first of these. This smaller DS3 Crossback, introduced a year later, is the second. It shares most of its engineering with new generation versions of familiar PSA Group Super Minis like Peugeot's 208 and Vauxhall's Corsa, but packages it all up with a stylized expression of Gallic savoir-faire. Buyers are promised distinctive looks, jewel-like detailing and cutting-edge technology. There's also the option of a full electric E-Tense version too. Size-wise, the car fits somewhere between super mini-based B-segment SUVs and Qashqai-sized C-segment SUV models, which might actually be ideal for some potential buyers. This model's combustion engines are amongst the most efficient on the market, and there are some genuinely individual trimming choices to make your model really stand out. DS calls it haute couture and hopes potential buyers will find this car refreshingly different. Will they? Let's find out. The DS brand is very clear about how its products should look and feel. You sense though that the Gallic mark is slightly less sure about its dynamic provenance. How should a modern DS ride and handle? The classic 60s model was soft and floaty, but that car was a Citroen, a brand that rather owned that approach. But nor is it appropriate for DS to merely copy obvious German rivals, Audi, which has an obsession with big wheels and sportiness, and Mini, which wants to make everything cart-like, whether it ought to be or not. The compromise solution this scenario has almost inevitably led to was somewhat disguised with the brand's first standalone product, the larger DS7 Crossback, by the option of a clever active suspension system. Without fancy electronics of that sort, this DS3 Crossback must revert to its maker's undecided blend of virtues that leave you thinking it's prioritised sportiness one minute and supple luxury the next. Fortunately for DS, Virtually all small SUVs tend to share this kind of indecision to the point where it's quite possible for us to say that we're struggling to think of one that rides, steers or handles much better than this. That's not necessarily a compliment, more an indication of the prevailing culture in this segment of the market. To be more specific, the steering's pleasingly accurate, but could do with a tad more feel for the times when you're pushing on through tighter bends. Body roll is well controlled for such a relatively high-sided small car, and the ride's relatively pliant, feeling good at highway speeds, though it can be upset by deeper potholes and sharper speed humps. The six-speed manual gearbox we're trying here is quite slick too, though you can only have it with the entry-level 100 horsepower engines. There are two, a 1.5-litre Blue HDI 100 diesel, which the DS people think very few customers will want, and the power plant we're trying here, the PureTech 100 petrol unit, the usual PSA Group 3-cylinder 1.2-litre offering. You can see why most people will prefer the green pump option. The PureTech engine isn't particularly keen to rev, but it has an eager note and lots of low-down boost. Plus, it's significantly cheaper than the diesel, not that much less economic, and with 35 kilos less curb weight to lump around, 
it'll make the car feel a touch more agile in the unlikely event that you find yourself wanting to throw this cross back about a bit. That's also probably why you'll get to 62 miles an hour from rest a fraction faster in the PureTech derivative, 10.9 seconds as opposed to 11.4 seconds, though both models top out at 112 miles an hour. The majority of DS3 crossback sales, though, are going to be focused around the mid-range petrol version, the PureTech 130, which is available only with an 8-speed automatic gearbox that PSA sources from specialist maker ASIN. As part of that transmission package, you get steering wheel paddle shifters and a set of selectable driving modes, Eco, Normal and Sport. The latter being the one you'll need if you want to replicate the claimed 9.2 second 0-62 miles an hour sprint time achieved en route to 124 miles an hour. For the top of the range, the DS engineers were unwilling to plumb in a larger capacity petrol engine, so a range of fresh parts, different pistons, a new turbocharger were added to the 1.2 litre unit to boost its output to 155 bhp. The created PureTech 155 variant is also limited to the automatic gearbox and offers a rest to 62 miles an hour sprint time, theoretically reduced by a second to 8.2 seconds. The key stat with this operated unit though is its torque output, 240 newton meters, which hardly changes at all compared to the PureTech 130, so it's not surprising that to drive, these two top crossback models feel very little different. Or perhaps we should say the top two combustion engine to crossback models. There is, after all, another DS3 crossback variant, the electric e-tense version, a derivative possible thanks to the fact that the all-new CMP platform that this car sits upon has rather cleverly been engineered to accept both conventional and full battery powertrains. The full battery element sets this electric model apart from the brand's first electrified product, the DS7 Crossback e tense which was a PHEV plug-in hybrid. Customers of the DS3 Crossback e tense will, the company thinks, be people who want to see the back of fossil fuel completely. Hence, a setup that sees a 136 horsepower electric motor linked to a 50 kilowatt hour lithium iron battery and a system for recovering energy during acceleration and braking, with effectiveness you can maximise via two driver activated energy recovery settings normal and brake. A DS3 Crossback E-Tense also offers three main selectable driving modes, Eco, Normal and Sport, the last of which delivers the powertrain's maximum 260Nm torque figure to the tarmac the instant the wheels begin to turn. Which is why, despite the fact that this electric derivative tips the scales at over 1.5 tonnes, rest to 62 miles an hour can be dispatched in just 8.7 seconds. Of course, drive like that too often and you're not going to get anywhere near the quoted WLTP rated driving range of 200 miles. Our focus today though is on the combustion versions of this car, all of which are of course front driven to suit the mood of a segment that generally has little time for the inefficient running costs that come with all wheel traction. That doesn't stop most other brands in the sector pretending that their little SUVs are somehow still Serengeti adventurers. Refreshingly, DS doesn't bother with any of that, fully acknowledging this car's remit for the urban jungle and designing it to suit with an appropriate level of savoir-faire. It won't be for everyone, but then it wouldn't be as appealing as it is if it was. The DS brand is about a different spirit, a different way to go, and Whatever you think about this car, one thing's clear, it delivers on that promise. DS stands for Different Spirit, and the look of this car is certainly different, the idea being to offer a more interesting take on B-segment super mini-based SUV design. Established DS themes include the LED fangs in the front bumper and the unusual shark fin between the side windows, but perhaps it's just as important to point out that the dimensions here position this car amongst the bigger contenders in this segment, targeting Audi Q2s and Honda HRVs rather than Jukes and Renault Captures.
The styling detail and panel shaping of a DS3 Crossback, though, is far more colour and trim sensitive than those more generic models, so it's just as well that the opportunities for personalisation here are so extensive. Take the front end. Subtle angled bonnet crease lines flow into a diamond effect grille that can be finished in matte or gloss black. It's separated from the glistening headlamps by distinctive trimming strips. The brand calls them DS wings that can feature either in chrome or more gloss black. And it's all set off by the vertically beaded LED daytime running lamps we referenced earlier, which frame the corners of the bumper. If you like your automotive jewellery, you'll love it. There's more willful individuality from a profile perspective. And you can't miss the one distinctive styling theme carried over from the old DS3 hatch, this shark fin feature that flows up into the B pillar. It's a stylized touch that seems almost as arbitrary as the panel creasing, a waist level swage line that flows from the tail light into the rear door, then abruptly disappears, and a tick shaped crease that flows across both doors that seems to have no defined stylistic purpose. There are big wheels, of course, to suit the current fashion, with a choice of 17-inch rims fitted to affordable models and 18 inches available further up the range. Our favourite perspective is here at the rear, where the broad, powerful shoulders that position the car squarely on the road are set off by an LED light signature that spans the entire body width through a trimming strip bearing the crossback name. Below each lamp is a slash-style vent that draws the eye down into this stylized bumper, the lower part of which incorporates these chrome-finished tailpipes. As usual, of course, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. This DS3 Crossback is the first PSA Group model to use the conglomerate's new CMP platform, the same chassis as that underpinning latest versions of the Peugeot 208 and Vauxhall Corsa, and one formatted for the use of both fully electrified and combustion engine power. Time to take a look inside, but before we do, here's a nice touch. The way that this flush fitting door handle springs out to meet the car's key holder once he or she gets within one and a half meters of the car. That's if, as here, your DS3 Crossback has the brand's proximity keyless entry and start setup fitted. the wheel, it's like nothing you'll have experienced before. If diamonds are a girl's best friend, as Marilyn Monroe once assured us, then ladies are going to absolutely love this Crossback's cabin, because that's a theme that reoccurs almost everywhere. Most of the infotainment and ventilation controls are clustered within seven intersecting diamonds, and you'll also find this shaping on the engine start button, in the switch gear by the gear stick, the lower steering wheel spoke, the instrument cluster design, and on the corner air vents, which rather unusually have been moved out into the doors. Whether this approach is ergonomically sensible is something we could debate at length, but it certainly looks distinctive. Of course, if you favour Teutonic simplicity and clarity of form, you won't like it at all. What's served up here is a glorious antidote to all that, a celebration, the DS designers hope, of everything that's cutting edge in French fashion. So there's a cascade of angled Art Deco switches either side of the gear stick, and for the upper part of the dashboard at least, the kind of exquisite trimming you simply wouldn't expect to find at this price point. The exact style of cabin ambience depends on the Parisian-themed trim package you've chosen. Rather nauseously, the DS people call these inspirations. The base variant gets a Montmartre theme, while top versions get Rivoli and Opera packages, more copiously trimmed in stitched quilted leather and diamond-style decoration. If you're tempted to ignore all of that and stay with the slightly more conventional Alcantara-themed mid-range performance line trimmed interior we've got here, we wouldn't blame you. With this, smart yellow and red stitching decorates that fabric on the fascia, the door cards and on a steering wheel that features classy knurled barrel-style selector dials. It's all very nice indeed. You can't help suspecting that the infotainment screen would have been diamond-shaped too 
had it not been necessary to source it from the PSA Group parts bin. As it is, the DS brand fashionistas have had to restrict themselves to merely offering a choice of display colour options, champagne or perfo line. The dash top mounted screen is conventionally rectangle and offered in either 7 inch form or if you have it with navigation, the 10 inch size we have here. It incorporates the usual Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring functionality, along with a decent eight speaker DAB audio system that's upgradable to a thumping 12 speaker, 515 watt bespoke Focal setup on request. There's no useful rotary lower controller to operate this whole infotainment setup, such as you'd get in say a rival Mazda CX-3, but the DS designers have tried to compensate by adding in the diamond shaped shortcut mid-level fascia buttons we mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, they're of the touch sensitive sort and not especially responsive, which can make them awkward to use without taking your eyes off the road. Anything that isn't included here and much that is can be found on the smart virtual instrument screen you view through the leather bound three spoke steering wheel. It's a DS themed version of the setup you get in comparably priced but larger PSA group SUV models like Peugeot's 3008 and Citroen's C5 Aircross. And as with those cars, it's a system that's configurable in a number of ways to show the information most useful to you. A dials option shows engine temperature and a digital speedo. The driving option adds safety features and navigation, brings 3D mapping directly into your line of sight. Plus, there are a couple of extra personal options that can be customised to prioritise things like trip computer readouts and radio settings. Ergonomic oversights are remarkably few considering the stylized eccentricity on display here. The seats are pleasingly supportive thanks to the use of special bi-density foam and though the driving position isn't especially commanding, your view frontwards is fine, though the A-pillars have to be wide enough to incorporate audio speakers. This sloping roof line compromises your view rearwards a bit though, so it's just as well that rear parking sensors are standard fit. And while we're grousing, we'll tell you that cheaper plastics appear in quantity further down the dash, that the footwells are rather small, which combined with the width of the central column means that space for your left leg is somewhat restricted. And that it's annoying that the central window lift switches are located so close to the all too similar electronic parking brake switch. There are a few issues with cabin storage too. Before fussing about with diamond decor, we'd prefer that the DS designers concentrated on finding a way of engineering right-hand drive models so that the majority of space in the glove box wasn't taken up with a fuse box, which once again on a PSA group model has happened here. In compensation, there's a deep storage box between the seats, but for some unfathomable reason, the 12 volt and USB ports that go with it have been mounted on the outside of the bin, where they not only look unsightly, but leave you having to charge your handset in front of prying eyes. Unless you object to the lack of an overhead sunglasses compartment, there's not much else to complain about, though, when it comes to cabin practicality. There are deep door pockets. You get a, a cubby by the driver's right knee. Twin cup holders lie behind the gear lever, and there are ticket clips on the sun visors. Plus, this tray in front of the gear stick can accommodate an optional wireless phone charger. Time to take a seat in the rear, which is the point at which you might be reminded that the same kind of money could have bought you a much bigger SUV of the fashion-led variety, albeit one with a volume-branded badge. This DS3 Crossback measures in at 4,118 millimetres in length, so in rough terms it's sized midway between a really small SUV like, say, a Nissan Juke and a mid-sized one like, say, a Nissan Qashqai. The DS people like to directly compare this car to an Audi Q2, which is 73 millimetres longer, and a Mini Countryman, a substantial 108 millimetres longer. Ultimately, what it boils down to is that you won't be buying this crossback if rear seat space is a priority, but you're going to want the back seat to at least be adequate for a couple of kids or a pair of adults at a pinch. Is it? Pretty much, yes. Legroom actually isn't bad at all, helped by the scalloped seat backs 
and the way that it's easy to slide your brogues beneath the chair in front. Thanks to the sloping roofline, headspace isn't quite as good, but much more of an issue is the way that your side view out is so restricted by that shark fin side pillar design we referenced earlier. If you've potentially claustrophobic kids, we'd advise that you should take them on the test drive to make sure that they'll be happy here. On the plus side, the transmission tunnel isn't too high and there's a neat netted storage area just above it, though no connectivity port. LED lights sit over the door apertures and there are decently sized bottle holders in the doors themselves. It seems a bit mean though to delete the seat back pockets with entry level trim and the seat back headrests dig uncomfortably into your back unless you raise them up each time you take a seat. You don't get the sliding seat base or reclining seat back options that feature on some cars in this class, nor is there a central armrest. In compensation though, the standard of trim and finishing is, as in the front, a class above what you'd find in most B-segment SUVs. Finally, let's have a look at the boot. Now, given the fairly compact size of this car, you won't be expecting it to be huge, and sure enough, the 350 litre capacity is 55 litres down on an Audi Q2 and 95 litres down on a Volkswagen t rock There's no extra room under the floor, but that's only because laudably DS includes the proper space saver spare wheel you have to do without on most class rivals. Another plus is the low loading lip, so lugging heavy items in and out will be easy. There's no adjustable height boot floor, and perhaps a little more surprisingly, DS has forgotten to add bag hooks, and there are no tie-down points for the rear section of the boot. It would have been nice to see the kind of 40-20-40 rear seat back splits that you can get in a rival Mini Countryman, or at least provision for a ski hatch. Unfortunately, this DS has neither, so if you need to take longer items, you'll need to push forward the split 60-40 backrest, at which point 1,050 litres of space is revealed. This car may be sized between small and mid-shaped SUVs, but it's very definitely priced against models in the larger category. That's usually the case with premium brands. You get smart looks and a classy interior, but you pay the kind of money you'd normally have to find for a car from the next size up. With this DS3 Crossback, we're talking pricing that was pitched from launch from around £21,500, in theory anyway. In practice, hardly any versions of this car are sold for less than around £23,000 and most are going to leave DS Salons, the company's showrooms, at just below or just above the £25,000 mark. From launch, standard range pricing topped out at around £32,500 but with special editions or particular options boxes ticked, your DS3 Crossback could easily be knocking on the door of thirty-five grand. Did we ever think a super mini-sized car could cost so much? The DS brand understands that before spending that kind of money on an unfamiliar product, you're going to need to be pretty convinced. They're also aware that exposure to this car might be difficult, given that there are only around 60 DS brand sales points around the UK. Hence a DS only you service that'll see a trained sales expert bring a car to wherever you happen to be. You may have seen how the engine lineup breaks down earlier in this film. And just to recap, the base PureTech 100 petrol unit we're trying here and the single blue HDI 100 diesel variant come only with manual transmission. The remaining PureTech 130 and 155 petrol derivatives are sold only in automatic form. Your other option is the fully electric E-Tense variant that your nearest DS salon will be keen to tell you all about. Pricing for this will sit in the thirty to £35,000 bracket once you've subtracted the £3,500 government grant towards purchase. Our focus here is on the combustion engine models, and to be able to choose between all of them, you've to ignore the plushest and most basic levels of trim and go for either of the two mid-range spec options, either performance line, which is what we've got here, or the prestige model you'll need if you want a cabin with leather upholstery and the larger 10-inch touchscreen. 
If both of these variants are beyond your budget and you're limited to base elegance trim, then your engine selection will be limited to a choice of either the diesel or the PureTech 100 and 130 petrol units. Alternatively, if your budget's not especially limited and you can afford to consider the ultra prestige models at the very top of the range, you'll be offered a choice between the 130 and 155 PureTech petrol units. The various trim levels feature distinctly styled interior packages. DS calls them inspirations, themed and styled around the perceived ambience of various Parisian districts you can reach on the city metro, primarily Montmartre, Bastille and Opera. In future, we'd also maybe like to see Villejuif, Louis Aragon, or maybe even Gare de l'Est. Then again, maybe not. Anyway, just before we get to all that, let's take a look at where this car sits against its its most obvious rivals. So what competitors might these be? Well, it's easy to get confused here if your objective is, as it should be, to compare apples with apples. This car is essentially based on super mini-sized underpinnings, but its pricing span more naturally pitches it against larger but less premium feeling SUV models from the next class up based on family hatchbacks. There are any number of these you could choose in preference. Nissan Qashqai's, Renault Kajars, Kia Sportages, Ford Cougars, Vauxhall Grandland X's, Hyundai Tucson's and so on. And all will give you a bigger boot and more rear seat space. But you'll have to forego the individual fashion-led feel of this DS. In terms of a car from this larger segment that shares this one's sense of style and emphasis on individual personalization, the Mini Countryman probably gets closest, but it's a heavier, longer and slightly pricier car, which may not be what you want. So let's focus on competitor models that are rather closer to the kind of car this is trying to be. Rather bravely, the DS people talk about this car's primary rival being the rather better established Audi Q2, which costs about £1,000 more in base petrol or diesel form, but offers slightly better performance and a bigger boot. Further up the range, the price difference between the two cars widens. Let's say that like many potential buyers, you want automatic transmission, decent spec and a perky engine with a sub 10 second rest to 62 mile an hour sprint time. For that, you'll need a Q2 30 35 TFSI S-Tronic variant that's nearly £2,000 more than a comparable DS3 Crossback PureTech 130, which is quite a difference in this segment of the market. It's hard to find too many other cars that are quite so directly comparable in this segment. For us, the two closest options probably lie with the Volkswagen T-Roc and the Honda HR-V, which cost about the same but are both fractionally bigger in size. Smaller volume brand super mini based SUVs like say a Nissan Juke or a Renault Capture could save you three or four thousand pounds but really sell to a different kind of customer. You'd be closer to the size and price proposition here if you were to consider cars like the Mazda CX-3 or the Volkswagen T-Cross but neither really delivers the trendiness of a DS3 Crossback. Ultimately, this DS is the kind of car you buy if you like the idea of one of the smallest premium brand SUVs, say a BMW X1, a Mercedes GLA or a Volvo XC40, but needs something a little more manoeuvrable that's potentially pitched the more affordable side of £25,000. Viewed in that light, you can see how this car might appeal to the right kind of buyer. And if you happen to be that person, then you're going to want to know just how generous the brand has been when it comes to standard spec. Well, let's see. The French mark isn't expecting to do a vast amount of business with its base elegance trim level. But nevertheless, that does include a decent amount. There are 17-inch grey anthracite Nagoya diamond-cut alloy wheels, an acoustic windscreen, auto headlights and alarm, rear parking sensors, the Space Saver spare wheel that many rivals make you do without, and a full package of camera-driven safety kits. We'll come to that later. 
Inside, Elegance models get a 7-inch centre dash touchscreen, which is your access point to an 8-speaker DAB audio system, Bluetooth and mirror screen smartphone mirroring, incorporating the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto systems. There's also a digital instrument cluster, manual air conditioning, height adjustable front seats and the Montmartre Inspiration Trimming Package, which gives you black basalt interior decor trimming and bronze meteorite cloth upholstery. Here we've opted to try the next level up. Performance line, identifiable by its 3D LED rear lights, its dark tinted rear windows, and by an extra exterior emphasis on gloss black. You'll find that on the smarter 17 inch wheels, which are of the Dubai black onyx variety, and on the caps of the door mirrors, which gain heating and electrochrome power folding functionality. Inside, soft Alcantara part trims the upholstery and features as part of the cabin decor. Plus, you get a front central armrest, rear seat pockets and chromed door entry sills, along with DS Brand's more supportive premium seat, which has special comfort foam and positions you in front of a set of aluminium pedals and a black perforated leather steering wheel with contrast stitching. Want to stretch further up the range? If so, your next stop on the DS line is Prestige Trim with its Bastille Inspiration Package. We mentioned earlier that you get leather upholstery at this level in the range. The seat's finished in black basalt grained hide, which the Bastille package sets off with bronze cabin decor and a light grey covering for the interior ceiling. Other prestige level features include Madrid black onyx styling for the 17 inch wheels, automatic wipers, front parking sensors, automatic climate control, a frameless rear view mirror and a couple of extra front USB ports. Plus, most significantly, the cabin gains the larger 10 inch centre dash touchscreen with incorporated connected 3D navigation. If you want more, then top ultra prestige trim gains you larger 18-inch Singapore grey furtive diamond cut alloy wheels, LED daytime running lights and the brand's sophisticated DS Matrix LED vision headlights that adapt to their beam to road conditions and other traffic. The interior inspiration package at this level is Opera, which gets you art black basalt trimming, both for the interior and for upholstery, which gains pearl stitching and softer Nappa leather, featuring classic DS brand watch strap style finishing. Black premium leather covers the steering wheel, the door mirrors gain a defrosting function, and there's also a head-up display. All DS3 crossback models come with a freely downloadable MyDS app. Amongst other things, this allows you to monitor and record fuel consumption and even find your car if you've forgotten where you've parked it. There are also neat incorporated Only You features that include DS assistance, which looks after you in the event of an accident or a breakdown, DS valet, which you can use to have your car collected for servicing, DS rent, which allows you to test another DS model, and DS club privilege, which gives you special privileged DS ownership opportunities, access to exhibitions, private DS events, and so on. Enough with standard features, what about options? Well, most versions of this car will be sold with the two mid-range trim levels, either Performance Line or Prestige, and for these, DS offers buyers an extra cost plus pack that gives you larger 18-inch wheels, the DS Matrix LED Vision headlights and LED daytime running lights, plus on a Performance Line model, you get automatic climate control too. Before you shell out for that though, bear in mind that unless you want your car finished in flat Bianca white, you'll be paying your DS Salon more for your choice of exterior body colour. Go for grey, black or white and you can have a monotone body colour, but you're probably going to want a contrast coloured roof. There are three options, white, red or, as in this case, black. You'll need to colour match these shades carefully to your choice of optional metallic paint finish for the rest of the bodywork. There's also a single pearlescent colour, pearl white. Avoid entry level trim and you'll be offered various optional 18 inch wheel rims too.
You're going to want to take equal care about the interior trimming too. If you don't want a predominantly black cabin theme, you'll be pleased to find that the Prestige and Ultra Prestige trim levels can, for very little more, be had with an optional Rivoli Inspiration cabin trim package that gives you a pebble grey Nappa leather finish for the upholstery and the steering wheel. What else? Well, for buyers of Prestige models, there are a couple of extra options to upgrade the seats. The first we wouldn't bother with. The DS brand's elegant handcrafted watch strap finish for the upholstery is lovely, but when specified as an option on a Prestige model, you're paying nearly a thousand pounds, a cost that would make it more sensible to simply upgrade to the ultra Prestige spec that has it as standard. On a Prestige variant, we would take a look at the Comfort Front Seats Pack, though, which gives you heated, electrically powered front seats with a rather noisy massage function. Other extras of minority interest include the DS Sensorial Drive package, which allows you to personalise the colour of the centre dash touchscreen in two extra colours, purple or carmine. And you can add in a one or three year subscription to the TomTom Tom Speed Cam or Danger Zone package, which alerts you to speed cameras, traffic light cameras and mobile cameras along your chosen route. On to safety. Now, the DS brand doesn't want to be seen as lagging behind when it comes to camera-driven safety provision. So all DS3 crossback models come with the company's safety pack, which gives you four main features that use a high-tech multifunctional camera and radar package. The main one, as you might expect, is autonomous braking, an active safety brake system that detects hazards ahead and will apply the brakes if the driver doesn't react. There's also a lane departure warning system that'll alert you if you drift out of lane on the highway and lane keeping assist, a setup that in highway motoring would apply gentle steering assistance to keep the car exactly where it should be in its designated lane. Traffic signs recognition will picture speed limits, displaying them on the dash and the car's speed limiter can be set so that it automatically then adapts its speed accordingly. In addition, as you'd expect, there are all the usual things. Twin front, side and curtain airbags, Isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control. Plus, you get Hill Start Assist and the brand's DS Connect box package that will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact location if the airbags go off. If you want to go further with camera-driven safety kit, the advanced safety pack that's standard on top ultra prestige models can be added in as an option elsewhere in the range. This gives you blind spot detection that stops you from dangerously pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Plus there's extended capability for both the active safety brake system, which will in this form also work at night and specifically pick up pedestrians and cyclists. And also the lane keeping assist setup, which in this form includes road edge recognition. For the ultimate expression of what's possible in terms of this car's camera and radar capability though, you'll be needing to spend even more on a premium safety pack. This will obviously include all the advanced safety pack features just mentioned, but of course it also goes a step or two further. The premium safety pack comes in its simplest form on a manual gearbox model where it gives you active cruise control and extended functionality for the blind spot detection and traffic signs recognition systems. On an automatic model, the same premium pack also throws in high beam assist and most importantly, a system we need to tell you a bit more about DS Drive Assist. As the name suggests, DS Drive Assist represents a first tentative step towards autonomous driving. And when it's activated, though you've always to keep your hands on the wheel, your DS3 Crossback will essentially be driving itself. That's thanks to the way that a stop and go function works as part of the active cruise control, with the whole thing functioning in tandem with that lane keeping assist setup. Using this technology, your distance to the vehicle in front will automatically be adapted. Your DS will, if necessary, automatically bring itself to a halt, then move itself off again, and the car will follow the traffic flow independently, always positioning itself in the centre of the road. 
Thanks to all this, the DS Drive Assist setup works as effectively in stop-start urban traffic as it does on highway journeys. In most respects, this car does its best to try and disguise its shared PSA group underpinnings, but when it comes to running cost efficiency, there's reason for this DS3 Crossback to proudly parade its Peugeot Citroën-derived engines and stiff, sophisticated CMP chassis platform. This PureTech 100 petrol variant has a feather-like curb weight of just 1,170 kilos, which is incredible for any kind of SUV. Its closest rival, the Audi Q2, is 55 kilos heavier in comparable form, while something like a Volkswagen T-Roc is a full 100 kilos heavier, which is like carrying around the combined extra weight of an adult and a small child. Combine that with superbly efficient engine design and there should be the recipe for a class-leading set of fuel economy and CO2 stats and so it proves. This model's fuel economy readings have been measured according to the latest stricter WLTP or World Harmonised Light Vehicle Test Procedure rating cycle. But the emission stats the company quotes have been converted back to the older New European Driving Cycle or NEDC2 spec, since that's what a lot of rival models are still using. Anyway, based on that, this PureTech 100 petrol variant manages up to 52 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 105 grams per kilometre of CO2. To give you some perspective, for a directly comparable Volkswagen T-Roc 1 litre TSI, the figures are up to 44.8 mpg and 119 grams per kilometre of CO2. Quite a difference. You don't lose too much by choosing the PureTech 130 Automatic, which manages up to 47.1 mpg and 109 grams per kilometre of CO2. There's quite a drop though if you opt for the PureTech 155 Automatic, where the readings are up to 45.7 mpg and 121 grams per kilometre. Diesel DS3 crossbacks are going to be rarer than hen's teeth if you want one. It'll be because of running costs that see the blue HDI 100 variant deliver a combined economy figure of up to 62.7 miles per gallon and 97 grams per kilometre of CO2. Again, to give you some class perspective, a directly comparable Volkswagen T-Roc 1.6 TDI manages up to 51.4 mpg and 115 grams per kilometre of CO2. As usual though, the most significant gains you can make in running cost efficiency when it comes to a car of this kind depend upon your having the funds to finance the purchase of some kind of electrified powertrain. DS uses E-Tents branding for its electric variants. The larger DS7 Crossback E-Tent is a PHEV or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle which uses a 1.6 litre petrol engine combined with a battery. A DS3 Crossback e tens though, dispenses with combustion engineering altogether and is a BEV, or battery electric vehicle, the first of its kind in its segment. With this electric variant, a 136 horsepower electric motor is linked to a 50 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery and a system for recovering energy during acceleration and braking with effectiveness you can maximise via two driver activated energy recovery settings, normal and brake. Make the most of these and consistently drive with the car in its most frugal eco drive mode setting and you might potentially get somewhere close to the quoted WLTP rated driving range of 200 miles. As for charging, well, once you've fitted a wall box in your garage, you'll be able to fully charge a DS3 Crossback e tents from empty in eight hours. If, when you're out and about, you're fortunate enough to find a 100 kilowatt rapid charger, then 80% of battery capacity can be replenished in just half an hour. Today though, our emphasis is on the combustion engine versions and with these as ever, you'll need to remember that running costs are about a lot more than just fuel economy and CO2 readings. So what else are you going to need to know? Let's start with maintenance. Service intervals are every year or every 16,000 miles with petrol models or every year or every 20,000 miles with the diesel. Residual values are also going to be key to whole life running costs. These are difficult to accurately predict for a new product from a relatively new brand, but initial signs for the industry are encouraging here, and this car's comparative rarity will certainly help. 
DS reckons that after three years, this car's predicted value won't be far off that of a rival Audi Q2. It'll be interesting to see if they're right. You might expect a newly established brand to make an extra effort with warranty provision, but there's only the usual unremarkable three-year or 60,000-mile package. The electric e tense model gets a separate eight-year or 100,000-mile warranty for its electrical powertrain. And finally, let's give you an idea of what you'll be looking at when it comes to insurance groupings. The PureTech 100 petrol manual model we're trying here is rated at Group 14. For the PureTech 130 Auto, it's Group 19, unless you go for Ultra Prestige Spec, in which case it's Group 21. For the perkiest PureTech 155 Auto version, you're looking at Group 22 for Performance Line Trin, Group 23 for Prestige Spec, and Group 24 for the Ultra Prestige version. Finally, the 1.5-litre Blue HDI 100 diesel manual model is rated at Group 16. It takes a lot to create a premium brand. More than currently separates a DS product from the Citroen, Peugeot and Vauxhall models whose engineering it will share? Well, you be the judge. We'll simply say that this is a genuinely different option in a crowded class. It's individualistic, charismatic and in its own way quite unique, as this DS3 Crossback has to be to justify the prices being asked. Apparently, you'll be a target buyer if you're someone who's in tune with the latest trends, appreciates luxury and likes to express their unique personality. That sounds good in the brochure, but how will the reality translate in the showroom, given that most buyers these days seem to associate a premium feel with Teutonic design? Is there room for a fresh approach here. Nissan's Infinity brand couldn't find it in Europe, but we think the prospects for DS may be rather better. Competitor nameplates have the market recognition that DS is still seeking, but the company ought to find more of it courtesy of this car. It has a special feel, lacking from most similarly priced rivals, and its e-tense electrified technology is ahead of them too. It's not the most practical option of its kind in terms of rear seat room or boot space, and not everyone will like the looks, but there are some nice equipment touches, spec levels are quite generous, and the combustion engines are superbly efficient. And in summary, well, as we said when reviewing the larger DS7 Crossback, we like this car most because it feels special, or at least it will, for the right kind of buyer. That customer will love the painstaking attention that's been paid to almost every detail of this design. Again, it's certainly true that in some respects the execution here isn't perfect, but then there's something rather soulless and clinical about perfection. Ultimately, this car, like its brand, is aspirational. If you are too, and you're shopping in this segment looking for something a bit different, we think there's just a chance you might like it very much indeed.